When I decided I wanted to get into Axie Infinity, guys, there was so much to absorb. The teams were so expensive to build. What did these skills do? I was asking other players about what combinations would work good. I was using websites and looking at videos, but there was a lot of missing information, and I kind of just went by what other people told me without a practical knowledge of how it worked. So what I want to do today is break down a battle that I recently had in PvP that I won, and I want to show you guys how I start developing my own strategies for my team composition and some of the things that you might see in your team composition or be able to use in your strategies to effectively win and get more SLP and experience. Now, the build that I'm using is something that I debated quite a bit and decided to go with because of its balance. I have a plant tank which has some healing, some damage mitigation ability, and a little bit of ability to do damage, plus energy gain, which is really, really important. I have a beast that's designed to do critical damage along with energy gain, and I have a bird that's designed to be able to hit things in the back line. This is the most common build that you see, I believe. The other common builds are plant aqua aqua and plant aqua beast, which I'm going against today. So what I want to do in this battle is try to predict what the enemy is going to do to me and what I can do based on the hand that I have. I can look at the skills of all of the axes that I'm going against and their beast is exactly like mine. I mean the exact same build. It's nutcrack, ivory stab, single combat, and nut throw for its abilities. So knowing this, I know exactly what to expect from him. He's going to try to get combo cards and put them together to do massive damage in one round. The aqua build is something that I'm not as familiar with in general because I don't play my own aqua, but there are some abilities that I see very often, one being Swift Escape, which has the ability to make this Axie go much faster than my bird Axie, which is usually the fastest Axie on the field. The plant looks like they're relatively the same as me, except they do have October Treat. They're a little bit more defensively minded than I am, and being that he has October Treat, he can get some card draw from this too. So. Looking over my cards right here, I don't have a whole lot I can do. With my beast, I always want to be able to use combinations for critical and the energy gain utility. You can't really do it with one or two cards. You need at least three cards, so my hand is kind of out there. My hammer or carrot hammer ability for my plant doesn't really do a whole lot by itself. It's designed to gain energy when my shield breaks, but there's a lot of skipping that happens in the first round of Axie Infinity, and you always have to question whether or not it's a good idea to use your energy up front or conserve it for the next round when you can pull off better combos. And last but not least, my bird has plenty of cards, but my backdoor utility or dark swoop ability doesn't do much damage by itself, and I have two of them available. So if I decided that I wanted to do my Dark Swoop ability, it would probably just hit the next target, which would be the Aqua. 420 hit points, even without uh, shielding, I would not be able to kill them in one round. So I decide to just hold out and see what happens here. And there's my turn ending, and voila. Now I got a little bit more options here. So what happened? I got a couple more beast cards but still not a very effective lineup. There's a specific card that I'm looking to combo with for my beast cards, and it's called Ronin, or Single Combat. It's what pairs well with the other skills to make some serious damage through Critical Strike. Now, judging from the cards that I drew with my bird, I do have the ability to do a lot more damage than I did last round. Dark Swoop, I still have two of them, but I can do Headshot, Heart Attack, and all out shot and the good thing about all out shot is that it costs zero energy meaning that if i use it i'm not going to use energy i'll be able to conserve it for next round and with all those cards combined i'm relatively sure that i can get very close if not kill the middle axie right here which is the aqua so i look over my cards and i decide you know i even have some energy left over i'm pretty sure that they're going to attack this round at least once let me use the Carrot Hammer as well, just to give myself a little bit of defense, as well as gain some energy if they break my shield. And that's what I decide to do, and we're going to watch how it plays out here. So, 
my backdoor strategy works i get the jump on him because i'm faster and because i used all four cards i got the kill there now he uses pumpkin to get card draw and defense and i'm not going to be able to do any damage to him right now but if he would have broken my shield I would have gained some energy so you'll see that he stacked up all of the cards on the aqua meaning he's going for a huge attack with the aqua right here and he's likely to either kill my tank or get very close to it but because my bird goes first and i targeted the aqua i'm gonna be able to nullify his entire cost so he used four energy right there for nothing which is huge in a battle so after the round plays out i'm gonna draw more cards and it looks like i still did not get single combat for my beast which is really really unfortunate right now if i had single combat for a beast i could use three energy in a row to do a really really good crit and i would be able to probably put a significant amount of damage on his tank especially if i decided to mitigate it with headshot if i would have had the energy but i don't so what i think i'm gonna do here is because i can't use a successful combo with my beast I'm just going to play defensively with my tank. I'm going to put up a little bit of shield. Shield always happens first, by the way, on any skill that you use. And I'm going to see if I could do a little bit of damage to him. So I was able to resist a lot of the damage that he put out. And I was able to do a little bit of damage to the tank as well. That's going to help me in this round. Because as you can see, I got all of the cards that I need. This single combat card is what I need. And what's more important about this lineup is if I decide to use all three of my energy right here on the combination cards for Beast, I'll be able to pull my combo off as well as have some cards for next round if my Beast survives. I could get a headshot damage in here as well, but it's not worth coming outside of using the Beast cards because it's not going to benefit me. The combo is much more effective here. So I'm going to use Nutcrack, Nut Throw, and Single Combat. And I'm going to end my turn because I have zero energy. I can't do anything else. His Beast is going to go first, but he can't get my Beast. I didn't use any plant cards right here. So even if he kills me, it's no big deal. I didn't waste any energy on my plant Axie. And now I'm going to be able to execute my combo on his plant and destroy him now it's two axes to one ladies and gentlemen along with the fact that i have another big hand for beast now here's the thing his beast goes before mine so if he has a combo i don't have enough shield on any of my beast cards to be able to prevent him from doing a combo again i'm familiar with beast he's just like mine i know exactly what he's capable of there's no way i could defend against him I can't kill him with my bird cards here. Again, I have Dark Swoop, which doesn't really benefit me. It only does a few points of damage, and it's designed to be a utility card and get you in the back line, which there's no other axes to block, so it doesn't do me any good. And my headshot and heart attack skills are not good enough here. So it's a crucial decision that I made here, and what I decided is... He's going to kill my beast. If he doesn't kill my beast, I'm going to have plenty of cards anyway, but I want to conserve my energy to be able to kill him next round. Because he's going to kill my beast here, or I think he's going to kill my beast, all three cards that I draw next round are all going to go to my bird, and it's going to give me the best chance to possibly kill him because my bird's going to go before him. I've already looked at his skills. I know he doesn't have speed or any kind of speed abilities that could pass me up like an Aqua could. And that means that I have a great chance of killing him next round. So I decide that I'm just going to pass and conserve my energy because I know I can't kill him with my beast cards here. So we end the round and of course he does his four card combo, something that even my plant tank probably couldn't have survived. And my beast is going just like I said now, I told you that all of the card draw for the round is going to go for my only existing Axie left. You won't draw any cards for your beast or your plant because they're dead. So, again, I got the three cards and I have a combo, an amazing combo right here. Now, I actually have two all-out shots that I could have used, but all-out shot does a lot of damage to you as well, and I just wanted to play it safe. I always put them on the back end because if for some reason I do kill the other Axie before I use my last card, it won't kill me. <laughs> it won't suicide me and bring me into a draw. But because my bird is faster than his beast, he did have some cards, but it's not going to matter because I'm going to be able to kill him before he even has the chance to do that. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, victory. So those are the type of strategies that I think about 
lightning, lightning speed <laughs> I'm playing. Now, there's a bunch of builds that I'm not familiar with, and some builds are very, very complicated and hard to strategize against, and I haven't really figured out what that is. But I encourage you to look at your battles, see what the opponents did, learn your own cards, and learn the type of cards that you'll see from battles when you're playing against people. If you know that you face aquas often and that you lose often, you have to figure out what those aquas are doing so that you can properly predict what they're gonna do and be able to defend against them. You still have some RNG with your card draw and stuff, but as you can see, there's ways to think about it that will help you predict what you'll get when your axes die or when you have a certain amount of cards that you've already drawn. Learning to count cards and learning what the cards actually do is going to serve you so much in this game and help you get more XP or SLP, whatever you're grinding for today. Listen, guys, I hope this video was insightful for you. Do me a favor. If you like talking Axie with other people or even blockchain gaming in general, join my Discord. Link's going to be in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this is Uljan signing off. We'll see you next time.